Hey everybody, Jason DeZurek here with Steve Reisner and just glad you guys are with us. I want to find truth, right? That, that's really what we're about, is uh, being like honest. Truth, yes. Being honest and finding truth wherever it may go. And uh, Impaler, um, Steve, you want to tell him anything before we get going? No, I, I just really appreciate the conversations that we've had. Um, you, you actually, I mean, you've not agreed with anything that I've said, <laughs> I think, but, but uh, you still, uh, we have good conversation. You don't tell me that I'm uh, too stupid to understand, and uh, you actually enter, at least entertain or, or act like I say something when I say something back to you. Most of the evolutionists I've talked to over the years have uh, their first response is that I'm too stupid to understand evolution and I need to get an education. Um, so I did. I got a doctorate. The, uh, the different strategies and stuff that you've uh, you brought brought to, to my attention stuff I mean we're working on that stuff and I do appreciate the criticism on that uh, as long as it's constructive we had some technical difficulties so I'm going to read what we're talking about here for uh, this time for the uh, question and answer from the talk origins.org website and so what what the uh, question and answer we're going to deal with today is doesn't evolution violate the second law of thermodynamics after all, order cannot come from disorder. Now, the answer that they give uh, on the TalkOrigins.org website is, evolution does not violate the second law of thermodynamics. Order emerges from disorder all the time. Snowflakes form, trees grow, and embryos develop, etc. By the way, yes, I did get a haircut. Back to the video. First off, I guess I would like to say that I don't necessarily disagree completely with everything that he's saying here. Um, but I would like to point out some interesting things that sure. I noticed, noticed. And the law of thermodynamics, I'm sure everybody watching this is familiar with what the law of thermodynamics, uh, the second law of thermodynamics states, and that is basically... But in, we want to explain it in, because there's in some layman's people who might terms not be able to. ...that um, basically things run down. Time equals decay. Uh, we see decay everywhere. Time increases the amount of decay that there is. Things do not build themselves when there's random natural processes uh, uh, at work okay. uh, over time. Um, the longer an evolutionist gives the process, I think, uh, as I think about the process of genetic coding and, and, uh, and transcription, making more DNA, making more cells, uh, every time that happens there's a possibility or the likelihood, or, in some literature you'd say that every time it happens there's, there are some mistakes that happen. Um, the longer you give your process, then the more mistakes there are going to be, and oftentimes those mistakes are lethal. Okay. Um, or not often, but most often, almost always, uh, if they're dis especially if they're if they're displayed. But um, you know, if you a couple of really easy examples, give your lawn enough time without doing anything to it, it's not going to look like your lawn anymore. It's going to go crazy. It's going to get chaotic. If you give your hair which you have done enough time, <laughs> it's going to look chaotic if you don't do anything That's to it. Right. If you just wait weeks and weeks and weeks without washing it, doing anything to it, it's going to get chaotic. Um, you know, and I think a really good example of, uh, to kind of at least mimic some of the complexity of life is look at New York City and all the things that go on in New York City. Take out all of the laws, all of the order, and it's not going to take long for that city to be completely as chaotic as you can possibly make it. Um, because you, without order, things get cha uh, are chaotic. Without the application of intelligence, um, when we're talking about complexity, I'm not talking about the complexity of a snowflake or a salt crystal. I'm talking about the complexity of life. But the longer we give uh, that process, the evolutionary process, the less likely it is to me to have occurred. Um, intelligence uh, is required for life, uh, and intelligence does not happen randomly. Okay, so, so, well, let's get into that as far as, you know, they, they do reference snowflakes and how trees grow and regarding, you know, embryos develop. Can we get into that a little bit? Either Talk Origins is hoping that people already buy evolution and so they don't really care that this answer is bogus, or Talk Origins is banking on the fact that everyone who looks at their website is not very smart. Okay. Um... What using what using the growth of trees and embryos, this is begging the question. You're using the existence of life to prove that evolution is true. That's that's a very poor debate tactic at the, at the very least. But and when you're talking about something like a snowflake, 
or a salt crystal, you're, you're talking this apples and oranges. You're not mm-hmm. comparing the complexity of life to a snowflake and acting like acting like they're the same thing. If we want to quote answers in Genesis, we can, and I will. Uh, <laughs> comparing a snowflake or a salt crystal uh, formation to any assumed evolutionary growth in complexity is like comparing chalk with cheese. Uh, examining the two simply highlights the need for external information before biological order will arise, which is a strong argument for creation. And quote, this is to say that natural processes bring about order we see in salt and snow. So uh, natural processes can result in something as simple as a snowflake or a salt crystal. Um, you don't need programming or intelligence for that kind of stuff. Those are just the laws of nature. The laws of nature do not cause genes to occur um, so if you had something in the order of ABC 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 that being a salt crystal and you cut that in half you still have ABC ABC uh, if you add to it you double it you still have ABC ABC that com- that complexity is very simple but if you take something use letters of the alphabet and construct a sentence okay a dog sat on my lap that could be an example of a sentence you cut that in half you no longer have a functioning unit uh, if you add to it you don't have a, the same functioning unit it's mm-hmm. completely different that would be more like a protein if you take a protein which is a very particular order uh, of uh, chemistry or amino acids put together the right way you cut that in half you don't have the same protein anymore and often oftentimes you don't have uh, a functioning protein it's not going to self-replicate it's not going to do any of the stuff that it was designed to do or that you wanted it to do I said the D word um, or if you add to it, the same the same is true. So to say <clears throat> that a snowflake is the same as even something as simple as a protein, which co- compared to the complexity of a cell, a protein is really not that complex, but it's astronomically more complex than a snowflake. The bottom line is that there's a misunderstanding here on the of that the princ- of the principles that the author is trying to portray here on Talk Origins, and. Uh, it either demonstrates that they have an inability to grasp exactly how complex life is because they're acting like a snowflake. The order of a snowflake is is even moderately comparable to the complexity of life, or they hope their reading base is not intelligent enough uh, to figure out what the scheme is. Well, let, let's break it down for the layman, if you will. You know, we were talking about, if you will, the order for a snowflake or a salt crystal a b c d or a b c a b c a b c a b c okay right cut that in half you still have a b c right right uh you know a dog sat on my lap okay and you cut that in half you have a dog sat right which is not and that's not (laughs) complete it's not yeah it doesn't have the same function it doesn't have the same order yeah something is different and it's fundamentally changed right you were talking about how uh people would say well you know to prove evolution we're going to use something that's already existing with life, trees, yeah. things like that. That's fantastic. It, it, it reminds me of, and it is a joke, but I love it. You know, the scientists say, hey, God, we figured out how to create human life. You know, we figured out how to do it and all this. And God's like, great, show me how you do it. And then they go and they go get a bunch of dirt and God goes, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute, go get your own dirt. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're talking about here is, is human beings want to say, well, I, I can create that. Yeah, but you're not creating from nothing. We figured it out in a laboratory, which they're really proving intelligent design because using the they're design... They're designing it. Using the design of their experiment, which they haven't done. They haven't created life in a test tube yet. Even if they did, all the, I mean, I'm sure it would be under extremely strict conditions. There would be test tubes and energy sources and collection tubes and, and all this kind of stuff. They would just be proving that it cannot happen happen naturally randomly Um, but then they'll use terms like they know this and they know that like we know that the Uri Miller experiment didn't work because the we now know that the atmosphere was not what they thought it was then how do you know how could you possibly know that you could suspect it like I've said in a comment I made on, on there you have to have a time machine in order to do that in order to know I mean you do Right? Yes. All right. Well, everyone, uh, this one's been a little long. Anyways, we do thank you for tuning in. And uh, you know what? We'll talk to you later. You got anything else you want to say? Negative.